What is up, Merce Nation? Javier Mercedes here for yet again another Passion in Progress podcast where we talk to people and what they're passionate about and how they're making strides in the progress towards that passion. I change that intro every single time because I do it on the fly, but just know that this is the Passion in Progress podcast with Javier Mercedes. But it's not only with me. We are here with Justin Cordella, is that how you pronounce it? it? So I didn't know if it was um, if it was like Spanish. You know how the double L's is. I get that a lot here. Justin Cordella is a graphic designer. I need to get that out of the way. Sometimes I I, I'm I'm still a young blood in the podcasting game. So with that being said, (laughs) would you please explain what you do at the Chive as a graphic designer? I would love to. I am. uh, I was hired on here about five months ago to be an apparel designer. Mm -hmm. So t-shirts, hats, all the Things you can buy on the Chivery, mm-hmm. and that's uh, yeah. If you uh, if you're watching this online, he is wearing a T-shirt and he is wearing a hat. I am. I do wear clothes <laughs> every day, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, Justin Tordella, the first thing I want to ask is all of your branding is Justin Ryan Org. Yes. So, is there is there another Justin Tordella out there that you had to go with the Justin Ryan route no, on all of your branding? The the interesting thing is. Uh, there isn't, and there is another Justin Ryan. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, I think it, I don't know what show, but like he's like a fashion guy or something, or no, uh, that's even worse. Either fashion or like interior design or something. Um, but uh, Ryan's my middle name, mm-hmm. and it was always easier than having people remember my last name when I meet them, like oh, in a meeting or something. Yeah, I <laughs> so, mean, it, proof is in the pudding with the intro. Yeah. The dot org always threw people off because I, I I couldn't get dot com because the the famous guy had it, mm-hmm. um, so that throws people off. But other than that, like it's a little easier to remember than than the full last name. So. so if you guys are looking to connect with Justin online, all of his social branding and his website is justinryan.org. dot org. That's correct. Correct. That's me. Um, same initials as my. Uh, I'm Javier Rolando. Look so at that. so I could uh, I could just like cop your logo and be Couple like, hey JRs. hey hey it's hey it's you can do it, Mr. Graphic Designer. Speaking of copying your logo, I love um, the textures and stuff that you have on your personal stuff. Thank you. Can you talk a little bit about your um, your style? And from looking at it, it looks like you use a lot of um, what's like it, it's. I know it's called textures, right. but it's like that faded look. I, yeah. I don't. Wh- how is that explained in graphic designer terms? Sure. So um, when I was first starting out, I I started doing websites and quickly decided I didn't like that and transitioned into, into print for t-shirts. Uh, and when I was doing that, it was mostly for friends that had small bands or brands and they could only afford, you know, a one color shirt. Mm-hmm. So in order to try to make it look a little more interesting, you add a little, a little texture, make it look kind of vintage or add dimension in that way when you can't you vintage. Know, spend the extra dollar. That's the term yeah, I was like, exactly. yeah, okay. So. Kind of vintage or, or retro mm-hmm. kind of look to it. Um, and that just kind of always stuck with me. I, it, it it shouldn't, but it like pains me to see something just so clean and perfect. Like I like to, I want it to look like it's it's been around a while. I feel like the trend nowadays is to get stuff to not look like it was made in Illustrator. Right. Uh, or Adobe Illustrator is a program that basically most graphic designers yeah. or any any like design logo is probably made in Illustrator because it's just a program that speaks to every other like. Right. part of a company to get those logos and out. the file is infinitely scalable. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, you have the problem of having perfect perfectness. Right. Um, exactly. And I feel like as a graphic designer, you're striving to create something that's unique. Yeah, and, and another thing is uh, when you're just starting out or when you're uh, a couple years ago, I started doing some screen printing, and there's no better way to hide imperfections than to add more <laughs> add, add more textures yeah. and all that yeah. other stuff if, if it looks if it's supposed to look completely perfect and there's something that's off just a little bit you're going to notice it right away but throw a little mm-hmm. a little a little texture on it it's gonna you know it'll look imperfect but in a good way now let's talk about uh your past and how you got into graphic design okay. um one of the things uh, and you were just saying how you just listened to um yellowbirds podcast yes. um in that i think one of the coolest things that he talked about at the very end was seeking validation in your craft and then in like once you get validated in how good you are at something like yeah like go balls to the wall with it but like don't pursue pancake making if you're <laughs> like if you're only good at making crawfish right. that's a horrible analogy no but i'm keeping it <laughs> <laughs> um uh but at what moment were you like damn like 
I'm the I'm I'm the guy. Like I want to do this kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it it was it was fairly early on. I used to, I I was always into art. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom did some art teaching and stuff like that, and and I just, you know, as any kid would, I I really liked drawing, and coloring, and whatever. And then I had a cousin who was, I guess, about three or four years older than me, and he was really into it, and he was really good. So we would do, uh, we would go to his house. We would trace stickers and comics and stuff, and then oh, we would. That's awesome. They had a they had a photocopier, and we'd make copies of it, and we go door to door trying mm-hmm. to sell our little ripped off drawings. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just you were hustling <laughs> as a kid. That's yeah. awesome. We, I, I, I was probably eight years old. We made zero dollars, and no one even answered the door. But it was it was still cool. And that's something now being older. I the last thing I want to do is knock on our stranger's door to do anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, so so I started doing that, and then. Uh, as I got into kind of the end of middle school, early high school, I had a lot of friends starting bands and things like mm-hmm. that, and, and they needed someone to help out, and it just seemed like a, a good fit for me. Uh, I never wanted to to do a real job, mm-hmm. uh, and this is about as close as it gets to not doing a real job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, getting just to try be creative. It's like the best of both worlds, because um, especially like on Taylor's podcast, we talked about how uh, how open John and Leo are to just yeah. like creatives doing doing their thing, and then um, also like putting it in the space of the chive. But at least like like you just, and from my standpoint, at least like I come, I work on videos, and like that's the thing. Yeah, um, I'm assuming for you when you come in, it's like all right, let's do these designs and all that stuff for sure. whatever whatever endeavors that the chive has to offer. I, I noticed in one of the articles you talked about doing stuff for Fallout Boy. Was yeah. that um, was that later on? In so that was I I'd been doing stuff mostly for friends, and then I uh, a, one of those friends started. Um, he was like a tour manager for a band from New Jersey, uh, and they had happened to be managed by the same company Fallout Boy was managed by. Mm-hmm. So he made the connection with me and their manager, and she needed some stuff. And really, at that point, I had done nothing of note. I mean, I, I did stuff for friends and, you know, I, as much as that was fun, like they weren't, <laughs> yeah, as of right now, if, you, I, yeah. if I were listing out names, like none of them, you know, unfortunately made, you know, made it. So yeah, with her, it, with, with them, it was great. Like she, their, their manager, her name's Bonnie, or she used to manage them and she was great. She, she gave me a shot and, mm-hmm. uh, I didn't really deserve it at the time. <laughs> uh, it was definitely right place, right time. I just, I just knew the right people. And she, uh, you know, I think the first project I worked on her uh, with her was was like an insert that was in their seed their uh, their first album that was on a major label. So like nobody knew I made it, but it was just cool for me because you know a million people bought it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then right after that, we did a, an ad for um, Alternative Press Magazine, which was another one that was like, holy crap! Like I I don't deserve to be doing anything for, for <laughs> any of these. But uh, really, from there, it just kind of that that kind of boosted my confidence a little bit. And I started getting contacts from other friends that worked for bigger companies. And I was, I didn't know what I was doing. I would just email them and be like, hey, I do, I, I still remember the first email I sent to a big company and I still have it. And it was just basically, hey, uh, I do graphic design, you do stuff for bands, we should do stuff together. And it's it, such it, like influencer at the beginning was, of influencing. It was, it was the, the dumbest thing ever, but uh, that guy, for whatever reason, called me immediately and kind con- I think kind of to make fun of me, sort of like, <laughs> not in a, not like mean spirited, but just to be like, what the heck are you thinking? And uh, he gave me a shot, and and really everything started from there. Like it mm-hmm. it worked out great. And I, I that's another thing that I would never have the confidence to do ever again. <laughs> or I guess I wouldn't be stupid enough to do it again because yeah. it's never gonna work. You know, one of the first episodes I did was with Scott Clark, and okay. he he does a lot of the video stuff. Or um, he's a freelance video guy. Like the stuff that he's been doing recently, he's he's been getting the behind the scenes stuff for um, Fear the Walking Dead oh, wow. and uh, other stuff like that. So he's he's working on big projects. But uh, his very first like really huge one was just reaching out literally to ESPN the same way that you did and was just like, right. hey, I'm in Austin and I shoot some stuff and blah. Like yeah. the, the same like is probably only two sentences long. He found yeah. some email at the about page and then found the whatever through three links and then right. sent it. And then like uh, four months later or something like that, uh, the X Games is coming to Austin and then boop in his inbox is so-and-so from the head of production yeah. at ESPN and says, hey, we need somebody to do this thing. And he's like, yeah. Cool. It's amazing. That that now he's doing all this other stuff. But it's it's yeah. interesting how sometimes like you never know. 
if, when people just like, oh, hey, I needed this tomorrow. And then all of a sudden there's a person in their inbox that's like, hey, I'll give that to you today. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and that, that's the thing. Like even when I when I reach out to new clients now, um, I've, I've realized it. I think the thing that worked about that first one as as dumb and, you know, kind of over the top mm-hmm. as it was, is that it, it was to the point. Like, I used to send out these long emails like, hey, I, my name's Justin, I do this, this, and this, I've worked for these people, I've done whatever, and then like at the very bottom, I'd give them my portfolio. Mm-hmm. They don't, as, as rude as it's gonna sound, I mean, these people are getting, some of them, you know, a couple hundred emails a month or more, they don't care mm-hmm. about your story, at least in the beginning, they just wanna see what you're doing. Mm-hmm. So I think those like simple, straight to the point, like, here's who I am, here's what I do, if you want more info, we can talk about that later, but this is, you want to see my work, so here's my work. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> you're only as good as what you're doing currently. Exactly. That's uh, that's interesting, because as I go throughout the whole YouTube, um, and now podcasting game, with passion and progress, uh, is once you get online, like I, I made some videos for the tribe that are like, some of these videos get like four to five million views, but yeah. it's like, Cool. And I know it's a part of a, a much bigger teamwork. Like yes. some sales are putting it out in front of people. And then obviously it is very dependent upon what's happening on camera. Right. But I'd like to think at least 10% of it has to do with the editing. I think uh, so. But what's interesting is when starting um, my own YouTube page, like you could say and do and talk about all these things that you've done in your past. Nobody gives a shit. No. Like, no, they don't. I did, I did one episode where I talked about, like, doing an audio book with uh, a former president. And in that same, and then I, I worked with the Property Brothers for a whole summer, um, Morgan Freeman and, like, all this stuff. And I'm talking about, like, doing all that. And then it's, like, my least viewed video on YouTube. <laughs> like, nobody nobody right. cares. And it's, I, but I think it comes from a place of what value can you provide to people now? It's yes. not like, oh, I don't, like, cool. Cool to hear that. Right. What can you do now? Yeah, so, what, what um, can you do for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And then what, as that grows, I feel like if I were to tell those stories, once an audience is there, maybe, then they would care. I think but, so. but it's more about like uh, establishing a valuable asset to people who are spending their time giving you their attention. Exactly. And in, in I think in a medium like this, it's it's great for you to talk about what you've done and um your your journey because that's kind of you know <laughs> what the people what what they're here for yeah, yeah. the people want to know about your process and, mm-hmm. and how you got there and what you learned from it but yeah if it's somebody who's you're wanting to hire you like at the end of the day as nice as they can be they pretty much only want to know what you're going to do for them it's, and it's, that's for, it's for sure and that's how a lot of people i mean that's how a lot of people are like you you meet a new person and you have a friendship and it's like okay in the back of your mind sometimes you're thinking like you're, or people, not not you or me. <laughs> but in general, that's how a lot of people feel and think. It's mm-hmm. like, what am I going to be able to get out of this? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's it's a bummer, but it, it seems to be true. Have you ever been to Washington D.C.? I have. Well, as a kid, though. Um, I just we recently went there, um, or uh, like a year or two ago for a podcast for, that we were when we were doing um, John Cena and. I I was just like we went touring around the the normal touristy stuff of Washington DC yeah. and it's like it's so true that everybody at least everybody that I met that was actually living there was just like they would they're really like want to strike up a conversation with everybody yeah. but maybe 2 seconds into the conversation they're like oh who do you represent oh really yeah. like how can I get in like oh exactly. and then they're talking about all this stuff and I'm like wow this is like really really forward right. but I mean, everybody there is like to do a job of like, how can I get political gain? So exactly. I, I think it comes with a grain of salt because like if you go to that si- and not speaking against anybody in D.C., I, I'm just I'm just like, of course that's not. what I that's uh, that's what I like. That's all I encountered while it was right. there. Um, but that was like the I think that's like the upper echelon of like where that happens. But I think it's to be expected there. Yeah. And I think it, I mean, it's 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 in a lot of industries like. You'll see it in in a lot of areas in California, you know, L.A. Oh Silicon yeah, Valley, yeah, I can see that stuff like that. Like in the in the tech tech world, like I mean, you're gonna make good friends and stuff. But I think in the beginning, it's always kind of what what can I get out of this? Mm-hmm. You know, how how is this person gonna help me or my company? Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said, I mean, that's not a way that I like to do things, mm-hmm. um, but it it definitely you know it's something that's always in the back of my mind um, when when striking up a conversation with you know a potential client or yeah. speaking of. 
uh, potential clients and everything, when you were uh, starting out and you had your your groundwork from, it's uh, like your version of a viral hit. Uh, yeah, so like <laughs> Justin a viral going. Hit that no one knew. Of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I feel like in the, in the creative space, that's what sure. how, how it works. Yeah. Um, how how did you go from doing that to your creative hustle? Because uh, you were freelance for a fairly good yes. amount of time, and you have a family. So um, talk to me about how you were making money as a freelancer. Great. Well, in the beginning, um, I wasn't. So <laughs> it's pretty, pretty short story there. <laughs> it's, it's like, well, um, get, get this. I wasn't making yeah. any money. But no, uh, <laughs> once once the, the thing happened with, with Fall Out Boy and their team, and I reached out to the that one company with my weird email and, and that worked. I just kind of gained a little more confidence in um, finding, you know, people to work with in, in that world. And I, I'm sure in a lot of worlds, but in the art world, especially it's, it's hard to get contacts um, because your peers, they're all competing for the same thing. Mm-hmm. So especially in, in the apparel or like band merchandise world that I have been in, um, when you submit designs, you get paid a small fee. Mm-hmm. And then if they use it, you get paid even more. Mm-hmm. So, your friends around you who are also submitting, they want that that bigger paycheck. They want that approval at the end. So it's very hard to get um, people to share contacts. So what I would do is I would I knew with a lot of the designs I do, there'd be a small byline on it, either on, on the shirt or on the tag that would say um, under license to whatever. So like say it's a Beatles shirt, it would say, you know, Beatles art under license to company name. So oh, I would go to Justin giving out the tips and tricks. My, I don't know if it still works. <laughs> my wife and I would go to the mall and we would, uh, her girlfriend at the time, and we would um, go to all the stores that would have band t-shirts or novelty shirts, like uh, anything, food stuff. Like, And I would go in, I just one at a time, look at every shirt, and I would put in my notes on my phone who made it. Mm-hmm. And then from there, we'd go home and I'd, I'd go on Google and I'd look up all the companies. I'd find a contact um, hopefully I would email them cause I hated getting on the phone, mm-hmm. but I would occasionally, you know, just make a call and be like, Hey, I, I saw you guys do this stuff. Like, I'd love to hear more about it. Um, and just, just kind of go from there. And it, I'd say it worked about, uh, like maybe 10% of the time if I, if I were lucky. And by that, I mean, 10% of the time I'd find a contact, not necessarily like get a project from it. How, how much of your time do you think was devoted to doing, to, to, to finding clientele? At that at that time, it was uh, I'd say I, I did it maybe once a week at the most, and it, for just an hour or two. Were you were you doing some other stuff on the side, like were yeah. you working um, just like a normal whatever job? No, I uh, when I was in high school, I worked at uh, Kmart. Mm-hmm. It's my first job. I was a cashier there for uh, three months, which was long enough to save money to buy a guitar. <laughs> um, and then I, I left that job, and the only other I, I, I did a job at. Um, Walmart mm-hmm. for a month, uh, and that was I just yeah I just hated it. <laughs> um, that that one I had nothing I wanted to buy. I did just want I wanted to like have money to eat and stuff, but I just mm-hmm. couldn't stand it. Mm-hmm. Um, but luckily at that time, I mean I was living with my parents, so mm-hmm. it was I didn't have to really necessarily worry too much about um, mm-hmm. you know having somewhere to live. I couldn't do it now because I I was young and and dumb enough to just feel like man I really like doing art and I don't want to do something else. I've tried. For very short periods of time, I've tried regular jobs and I I don't like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just I just kind of went for it, and that was that was the only way I knew how was I, when I saw that thing on the t-shirts. I was like, man, I I feel like I could reverse engineer this mm-hmm. and find out who it was. Now the the thing that you'll find out is just like in food or any other industry, there's like four companies that do everything, with, and they have a million different names they do it under. Mm-hmm. So you'll look up twenty brands and find out, oh cool, they're all owned by this person. So mm-hmm. I did all that work for almost nothing. Yeah. Um, and again, they're not, m- most of them are not even going to respond to you. You know, the ones that did, it, it really worked out. And and I've, you know, despite all the stuff I was saying about people just wanting something from you, mm-hmm. um, in this case, it worked out great because they, I was able to, because I didn't have another job, I was able to be that guy who would take on the projects no one else wanted to in the beginning. Mm-hmm. So I n- didn't necessarily have the highest skill set, but I was around. So if you needed me and it was like, Hey, our client needs this T-shirt. It needs to be done today because it needs to be printed and in California by Friday. I was the guy that was just like, "Cool, let's do it." And mm-hmm. I, you know, I was new, so I was wasn't super expensive, and I was hungry. I was available to do whatever you wanted, whenever you wanted. I, it could be ten ten at night. It could be two in the afternoon. It didn't matter. Mm-hmm. I was I was gonna jump on it because I I needed the work, but also I wanted to I wanted to build something. You know, mm-hmm. I wanted to be 
always going. Uh, so did you go to college for this? I didn't. I, I, I had a inter not interview. I guess like um a tour mm -hmm. at an art school in Philadelphia. I grew up on the East Coast, and uh, it was great. Everybody was really nice. All the equipment was super high end and awesome. But I just felt like, man, I'm, I think I'm gonna be miserable here. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, I was already making a little money mm -hmm. doing freelance. I mean, and by little, I mean very little, like maybe a couple hundred dollars a month. So like nothing that I could support myself on. Mm -hmm. um, so I just thought, you know what? Like I'm gonna wait at least a year. I'm gonna try as best I can to just make it work without doing this. Mm -hmm. And luckily it, it, it worked out. Um, I just, like I said, just the, you know, knowing some of the right people or, or just having friends that were really, you know, open to, to pushing me in the right direction, mm -hmm. it, it, it definitely ended up working. I think that's a good example of today's day and age where I think there's definitely an argument for like, if you're going to become a doctor or a dentist or any of those, like, I'm hoping you're getting, oh, well, please. you're not, you're not going to be that unless you do get a degree. So, right. um, <clears throat> in my standpoint, I went to Ball State and got the music degree and it, nice. like, it, it pushed me in ways that I was like, wow, if I can accomplish getting this thing, then I know I can do all of this other stuff. Uh, but I know I, I, in one of the other podcasts, I talked to Sean Coleman. He did the, um, the squid here. He's the sound designer for Squidbillies. Oh, nice. That's and awesome. we had this, the same discussion on whether or not it's um, worth it to go to college uh, for something in the audio engineering realm. Okay. And we had the, we were, we were talking about like, well, you get certain aspects where you know the theory and you know the the technical things, um, or the, I guess the sciencey things of musical theory, and you can establish this lingo that you can talk to other people yeah. about, where it's like, all right, here's a one, four, and five chord in a, in a recording session, and then as an audio engineer, you can be like, well, maybe you should throw in a flat seven B yeah. f sharp. That's That'll not a real chord, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, it is now. Uh, <laughs> hashtag I'm making it happen. Uh, but you you establish that kind of lingo. But is it worth the I don't know what the college that is these days. But like the seventy five thousand right. dollars that it takes to go there, maybe because like just what you were talking about. There's there's also everybody else that's there is your peers pursuing the same thing. Right. And then you're all in this like little focused area. And then as you grow in life, like those, like they start spreading out and then you never know, like when you meet up with one of those people again, but in, in what you're talking about, like uh, your peer circle of these um, band friends and designers, like they're like, Oh, Hey, I get this lead to fallout boy. And then yeah. it, like, it goes on from there. I think it's interesting as people pursue what they're passionate about, the opportunities just kind of start to fall. The dots start to connect themselves yes. as you progress in life. And it's it, it, once people start recognizing that you're that you're passionate about whatever specific thing, they're like, oh, yeah, um, you needed that thing. I, I know that guy, Justin. Yeah, yeah he, exactly. he does that kind of stuff. And then it might not be, it, like you were saying, it might not be that, like, oh, this is something that needs to happen and it's a birthday card. But then <laughs> right. some CEO of some company is at that birthday it's and then it. it's like, wow, this is really cool. Who did this? And then it right. goes on, snowballs from there. Yeah. I think it was uh, a podcast I listened to recently that uh, had Larry King on it. Mm -hmm. And he made the comment, you know, he's interviewed tens of thousands of people. And he says, anybody who has told him that they've gotten to where they are without luck is lying. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, the example he gave, I, I'm... I'm going to keep it short because one, I'm going to butcher it. Uh, <laughs> but it was something about when he was first starting out and wanting to get into radio, he, you know, he, he ran into a guy from, from a radio station and just asked him like, Hey, I want to get into this. What, where's the best place for me to be to do this? And the guy told him like, move to Florida. That's a good spot to get into radio. And he made the, the comment that like, had he, you know, gone left instead of right that day and, you know, gone to a different store or a different restaurant, he never so would have run true. into that guy. It's so and that's true. that's where I was with with that, that's what I always try to think of is like there there were and and still are a ton of people more skills than me more talented than me, um, but I was just you know like I said a lot of it was the right place at the right time and me just being eager to do it um, mm -hmm. and and that was always in the back of my mind when I decided not to go to college is I don't know if it's better to go or not because I I don't have that experience um, I know there's definitely you know, things in its favor. I mean, there, there are things that I'm still learning now, 10 years later, 
that I probably would have learned in college pretty <laughs> early on. I mean, you were talking about the music theory and it's like, it took me years to figure out like, okay, yeah, those colors actually do look terrible because they, they don't complement each other. But then you can, you, you know the theory behind why that is. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that, and that's, that's the thing is like people, like you were saying you learn all the lingo. And I remember earlier on going to like these designer meetups or, and things like that. And people will be talking about stuff and like, how did you come, you know, how, I liked this design you did. How did you get to that point? Like what, what made you want to go in that direction? I was just like, I thought it looked good. <laughs> like, I have no idea. <laughs> you weren't like, well, it's the golden ratio. Yeah, I was, I was like, using I Fibia, Fibonacci yeah, sequence to establish these, uh, I just thought it these did. angles. <laughs> and, and you know, a lot of times that's not enough. But, um, you know, luckily uh, it, it ended up working out for me. And, and I think, you know, interesting enough, a lot of my friends now, a lot of my peers um, in design and in and out of the industry that I'm in did the same thing. Just uh, right out of high school, just worked as hard as they could. I love that, man. That's yeah. awesome. Me too. And, and that, I, I lived on the East Coast for the first 20 years of my life with my parents. Um, my my wife, in, who you know, I was dating at the time, we, we decided to move down to Texas, which is where her, her family's from. And we were living in an apartment in Victoria. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, everything was going great. We, you know, I was doing my freelance design. She was working at a dental office. And then uh, we she got pregnant with my first our first kid, Owen. And he was about a year old when a friend of mine in Austin was like, hey, uh, I'm working you know, with this nonprofit now. Um, we're gonna need a little bit of freelance work. So I started doing stuff for him and maybe two or three months later, he was like, yeah, we got this big deal that we're working on right now. If it works out, we're, we're gonna get an office and get somebody full time. So mm -hmm. uh, in my crazy mind with a, with a one-year-old kid, I was like, okay, we're gonna move to Austin mm -hmm. now. <laughs> Just in case it works out. <laughs> that's so, uh, but that's 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 funny because that's the same mentality you had with like, oh, I'm the guy that's around, and yeah. if you need me at two a.m., exactly, like I'll hit hit me up. And yeah. it was it was not good timing because I mean, so my wife had worked at a dental office when when she got pregnant. She worked up until she was like eight months pregnant, and then had Owen, and you know we had talked about it, and she she stayed home. So we're have a one year old. I'm the sole provider, um, doing freelance Jesus. work. Nothing gets you off your ass more than that. Exactly, and that Jesus. was the thing. I mean, we very we had very a very modest, you know, we made a modest living, and we mm -hmm. still do. But I mean, we went, you know, with our two incomes combined, we made, you know, what one person in college should be making. We did not make mm -hmm. very much money. And then when she left her job, um, it was just something turned on, and I was like, okay, I don't have a choice. Like, I need to make money. So then the following year, I made more than the two of us had made. The year before which still again was not very much money at all mm -hmm. but it is it's like it's a great motivator mm -hmm. um because who else is going to do it you know uh so yeah we i somehow convinced my wife like hey it's going to cost way more money to live there we're going to have no support system because we have no family there we just have some friends and this we have a one year old <laughs> it made it made zero sense and we both knew that uh we we may have fibbed a little uh telling the families that the job was a sure thing and it was already happening mm -hmm. and insurance yeah. and whatever else uh, so yeah, we moved up to Austin, and and luckily a few months later it did turn into an actual job. Mm -hmm. um, well, a few months later it turned into a contract, which was a little bit of money every week, and then from there eventually it turned into a full time job, and um, I was able to like kind of sigh. <laughs> think and at that point I was able to look back and be like, why did we do this? <laughs> insane? But I think that was that was the big thing was it's it's harder now. I have I have two kids now. We we have a house. It's harder now for me to be like, hey, let's just you Pick know, up and go. Let's just forget everything that we're doing right now that's making sense and just do the opposite, which is what we did then. But I, I'm so glad we did it because, um, like I said, it worked out. I mean, I ended up working at that job for for five years mm -hmm. and continuing to do freelance on the side of that. So um, it, I really lucked out there because I don't know what I'd be doing, you know, if we were still living, you know, in South Texas, just. I'm sure you would have found something that would have been the equivalent of I hope so. <laughs> where you're at today in, in terms of like uh, just pursuing what you knew you were good at. Cause sure. I, I feel like as you progress in your craft, then it's just like, like I said, the dots start to connect themselves and something's going to pop up where they need you. Yeah. You know, outside of just it being a crazy idea to move, I wasn't, I wasn't chasing money. Mm -hmm. um, I was honestly just looking like it sounded like it would be a cool thing to do mm -hmm. and it sounded like yes through that cool thing i'd be able to provide for my family which is great but um, i think that's another thing that helps or has helped me 
uh, be successful is I, I've never really cared about money. Mm -hmm. um, I care about it in that I know I need to pay my bills and stuff, but like I've never been the guy who's like, okay, if I do this, this, and this, I'm gonna make this amount of money and it's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna have all this stuff. I just wanna pay my bills and, and provide mm -hmm. for my family. My big thing was I just wanna do cool work and I wanna have fun doing it. That's interesting to hear because I, I definitely get it from a, from a, like, I want to be doing the things that I want to be doing. Right. But as I keep going in doing video work, editing takes a severe amount of time. Yeah. Taking a lot of footage from any project, whether it be here or somebody that I'm doing a project for, it takes time. I know there's some degree of, like, I'm not chasing money and everything, but also there's got to be at some point where the value of your time surpasses sure. the value of the like if, if somebody's going to be wanting you to do a gig at some point like yes there's the points where you're like i'm i'm trying to provide for my family oh, and every, er, everything yeah. else but i think there's a there gets to a point where you have to say like no this is going to take a long time and i'm going like what am i going to get out of this by working on this right. thing uh do you experience or have you gone through that or? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I do. There there are still now projects that come in that I'm like, uh, you know, in my, I'm in my freelance life where I'm like, yeah, there's no way. Um, one, sometimes it's just people like just completely devaluing what you do or undervaluing. Yeah. It. See, that's what I'm trying to get yeah, at. Yeah. It's like there, there's a certain uh, there's a certain respect that has to go there. They're like, look, I, I know I can do this and I know I can whatever that other people can do this for whatever cheap. Right. But like. Come on, man! Like, oh yeah, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, of course, of course, there, there, there are. I'm not, I'm not chasing uh, money in that way, but, but mm -hmm. for sure, like if it's out, outrageous, um, in terms of like the amount of time it's going to take compared to what it's going to pay, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say no to that. But mm -hmm. I just mean it's not um, the primary. Oh yeah, for sure. The primary deciding factor. I mean, you know, if there's two jobs that come along at the same time and. Um, one pays just a little bit more than the other, but it's yeah. going to make me miserable. I'm going to take the one that pays a little bit less. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's just the way I've kind of always thought about it is like if you look at uh, people in in movies or in TV or, or, or music talking about how they started, like you don't really hear people – like they're all super rich and famous now. You're, you're seeing them on TV talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I've never heard anybody say like, oh, I just wanted to make a bunch of money. So I, no, yeah. I just, I went and tried out for a commercial. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, really in the, the part you didn't see before they were on, the, you know, the movie screen is like the 10 years of just grinding, just, yeah, just pain <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Of, of, of little money and, and uh, a lot of hard work. And uh, I think that's just, this is going to sound like I'm like trying to be cool. Uh, <laughs> But and I'm not cool. Um, I don't. I I can't relax. Mm -hmm. like I'm not like a, I'm not the guy who likes to. I mean, I'll I'll sit down and I'll I'll watch basketball. Um, but my ideal situation, if if my kids are, I want to I want to hang with my family. But if they're doing something or the kids are out or they're sleeping, and my wife's doing something, like if I'm watching basketball, I want my computer in front of me. I want to mm -hmm. be working, um, whether it's designing something or just like reading learning something like I can't just sit down and do nothing mm -hmm. um and I I, th I think I got that from my dad he he was always always working like he worked to relax mm -hmm. and I think that's that's kind of what I do so um I think that's that's been a big help for me is just like like I said always being hungry and always being on to to take on any project but yeah of course if somebody comes in with something ridiculous I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, always being hungry, always be on. That's Man, right. that might be the title of the podcast. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll work on a contract. <laughs> um, speaking of hungry, let's 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 dive back into your own personal stuff. The yeah. the what you're doing right now, the the pizza and yes. all that stuff. So explain by the concept behind that design because okay. it seems like that's the thing that you're pushing right now. Sure. So uh, the the job that I was talking about that I moved to Austin for. Or, moved to Austin for. Um, he did he did air, sorry, quotes, did air for, quotes for yeah. for people that are audio media. I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um so when I when I moved to Austin I, I worked at the nonprofit job for five or six years. Toward the end of that it was it was very clear that was not a place I wanted to be anymore. Not I not to, to bad talk them, but uh it just wasn't working out. So I, I left that job and I spent a year just uh doing my own thing. 
um, full, full-time freelance with uh, two kids, one that was just born in a new house. Mm-hmm. But uh, now, now at least you're established and you yeah, have some connections. Have some connections. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, it, it, in the, in the music world, it's unfortunately like, you know, you're, you're that guy for so long who they can come to at any time and you're going to do it, which is what I did. And then I got a full-time job. So now between nine and five, I'm like, yeah, guys, sorry, I can't do that. That, that's the value thing. That's what I was talking about. Like it you is. don't have the time. It is you know? the value thing. But then, but then when you leave that job five years later, those companies found a hundred new people to do stuff for them. Yeah, instead. yeah, for sure. So, for sure. so it was a lot of you know trying to kind of crawl my way back in. I, I still had contacts and I still was doing freelance, just not enough to to make a living. Mm-hmm. So I just started thinking like, what can I do to um, you know make some more money? Uh, at that time, it was like, oh shoot, like. I do, I do care about money right now. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like we bought this house less than a year ago. We have a, a, a you know, six month old baby and I have no job. And I'm starting to no recognize insurance. that you, that you put, you, you put, th- uh, I don't want to make this sound Please bad, <laughs> uh, but it's a, uh, like you put things in place to make you um, accountable. Yeah. And I like, obviously I don't mean to say that as in like, Oh, I had a kid and now I'm like accountable for this, but like that kid is coming and like, this is, this is that next, this is like the leveling up in the game of like, well, here's this, here's this thing. We need to go do this. Um, Yeah. But can continue. I I love the, not to, not to talk about basketball again, but I love the fourth quarter. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I try, that's when I do, I feel like I do my best work is when I'm Mm -hmm. like scrambling Mm -hmm. to figure it out. And that's my, my wife always gives me grief for it because I'll, I'll get a freelance project in on a Monday that's due the following Monday and I'll start it Sunday night. Cause oh, I just <laughs> like, I technically, yes, I could have worked on it other times. I could have prioritized and figured it out. But like, I like the scramble. I like, mm-hmm. um, of course I want to deliver high quality work and I always try to make sure what I'm sending is, is, you know, to par or better. But I feel like I do some of my best work when I'm like under that pressure. So as much as we were nervous when I left the job, um, there was something in the back of my mind that I don't know why, but that told me like it's gonna it's gonna be fine. You're Some people okay. just like work that way. Yeah, like clockwork. And yeah. and I think my wife had been thinking she was super supportive, but she was the one who was thinking like this is not gonna be good. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this isn't how this works. Like, you don't just leave a job and then just figure it out later. Yeah. Um. So so yeah. In order to try to make more money, I was like, okay, I need to think of some side projects. Um. I need to do something. Uh, where I'm not relying on this company to contact me and give me work. Like I need to be able to generate so on my own. Um, so luckily a few years earlier, I had started selling, you, know, you had mentioned the textures earlier. Mm-hmm. A few years earlier, I started selling those on my own. I started a little store. Didn't make a ton of money, but I knew at that time, like, cool, I can put more time into it and hopefully generate a little more that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, by go the ahead. way, is that store at justinryan.org? Yes, if you go to justinryan.org and you hit the... Uh, I should have looked at my website before this. Um, either the shop tab, if there is one, or the texture club tab. That'll take you to my shop uh, mm-hmm. where I sell textures and vectors and fonts. For all you graphic designers out there, you should check it out. But use, the, use the offer. No, there's, there's <laughs> Click the microphone on the top corner. Uh, no, um, so yeah, I started, doing, I, I started putting more time into that. And then I, I really like uh, memo books. Like little notebooks, like field notes Pocket. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I was gonna take one out, but we're, oh no, no. Uh, I mean, if people are watching it online, they can see field notes. Um, I that's love... your design too on the back, isn't it? That is I, uh, for my my zip code. Um, so I, I'm really into these notebooks. I I collect them. I have hundreds of them. It's mm-hmm. uh, it's weird. Um, it's an obsession. And I thought, okay, I want to make my own notebooks, but there's a million people making plain notebooks with lined paper, or gridded paper. And I was like, well. I like notebooks. I like pizza. I'm going to just combine those things. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I, I made this thing called the pizza log <laughs> <laughs> where I was like, okay, uh, so the cover's pizza related and then you open it up and it's like you write down the date and where you are and who you went with and what you ordered and then you review it in your notebook for yourself. It was like Yelp, but inconvenient and you can't share it at mm-hmm. all. Like, <laughs> but it was something that but I was But it was like, niche enough that it, it just exactly. might work. <laughs> it was niche enough that it just might work and more importantly – by ordering the pages to make, you know, uh, uh, several hundred of them, I could have one to put in my pocket. Like that's, <laughs> that was, that was the main thing I cared about. Was like, I think this is a cool idea, and the only way I can make it in the quality that I want is to make a lot of them. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, people will buy them. <laughs> uh, and luckily, they did. <laughs> that I looked out there, and um, I, I had told a couple friends that owned shops in the Austin area, and they they picked them up, and 
because I was in the the world of collecting notebooks, there was like a lot of Facebook groups and forums that I was in where I was able to post about them and be like, hey, you guys like notebooks. I made this weird thing, just thought it was kind of funny. Um, and I ended up selling out of that first run and you know, we did not make a ton of money off of it, but it, it helped us float by for a couple more months um, where I thought like, oh man, I just God, need to keep- such an interesting I need story, keep, man. I need to keep coming up with more <laughs> ideas and more things to do. Um, what a grind, what yeah. a hustle. So, but then that turned out, um, it's it, paper got more expensive somehow. I don't know, I don't know how that works. <laughs> Those paper text. So when I went to do the second run of these, uh, it was going to be like double the price, and I was like, oh, I'm going to chill for a minute. So I haven't, I haven't done anything with them since. But mm-hmm. uh, I sold out the first two runs, and I had a lot of fun with it. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it, it helped us kind of get by for a little while, fill in, you know, what what I wasn't making in freelance. And really from there, I got the bug of like, man, I want to do more of my own stuff. Like I always loved the idea of, you know as much as I, I like to work, mailbox money is cool too, where I put in a ton of work in the beginning, like the texture stuff. I'll put in all the work in the beginning and then you know I have things I made to sell on there five years ago that people still buy today. Not, not a ton. Income. Residual yeah. income, exactly. Um, I've never heard of it called mailbox money, probably because <laughs> it's like snail mail. Like, I know. Isn't <laughs> as much of a thing, but yeah, for sure. Uh, for anybody listening, I'm 60 years old. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have email back then. Uh, no, I don't, I don't know where I picked that up from. But um, yeah, so from there, I uh, the next big thing I or big thing in my mind was um, it was right around the time of uh, the election in America. Mm-hmm. And Is I was, this Obama? Or? No, this was this was the most current one, 2016. Oh, okay. um, and I was feeling a certain way mm-hmm. and was like, man, uh, and I, I, not to not to make any grand political stance here, but I was thinking like, you know, I see. Uh, to me, what seems like a lot of people who are feeling like they're not welcome or, or disenfranchised or whatever, um, and I was like, what can, what can I do using my my skill set to help? So I, I came up with this idea to um, do a project called Art Against Hate, which was uh, I did a t-shirt, a tote bag, and a keychain, and, and a little website where he's wearing the t-shirt right I now. I am wearing the t-shirt <laughs> camera. Uh, um, so uh, so I, I I did this T-shirt. I had um, a friend's print shop printed them out for me, and they put them in their mm-hmm. shop up in Dallas. And I sold them online. And, and the whole idea was, I'm going to sell these. As soon as I make the couple hundred dollars I put into it back, all the money's going to go to um, Southern Poverty Law Center, which is a, a great nonprofit. Instead, I got really excited when I got my first order, and I started just donating everything as soon as it would come in. <laughs> so like, I'd sell this shirt for twenty bucks. Um, I'd make a profit of maybe 10 or 12 after that. And I donate 20 bucks to the nonprofit. So at that time it's like, oh man, like here I am trying to come up with ideas to make money and I'm losing money. But uh, it felt really good. Like I, uh, and I, and I did gain some clients off of it. I think where uh, I ran Facebook ads and and Instagram ads. And um, oddly enough, like someone I had worked for 10 years ago, saw one and bought the t-shirt and we reconnected and I started to work for their company. So like it ended up working out in in a very unintended way, mm-hmm. but really my only goal there was to to try to make a difference and and do something other than just do, draw pictures all day. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the end of the day, I ended up you know, I donated I think it was like four thousand dollars to Dang. Southern Poverty Law Center. I was super excited about that because um, what a great reallocation of money. Like taking taking some other. I, I think in terms of like doing things like this, what I love about. Um, doing projects where you you raise money for other people is like right. you're just real real allocating the funds from like other like in little minute pockets right of like all right ten dollars here ten dollars here it's like all right well let me just like redirect these to like where yeah. i want them to and the fact that you can do that for four thousand dollars is awesome yeah and being being unemployed and and uh you know just freelancing you know trying to survive i there's i couldn't donate a hundred dollars of my own money like Mm-hmm. So, so like you said, I I knew I needed a way to, to, I I felt something inside me that was just like, man, like you need to do something for someone other than yourself, um, and that 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 was it. And, and like I said, luckily it worked out. It gave me a little bit of exposure to to some of the right people where I was able to pick up some some new clients off of it, which is was a great unintended uh, consequence from it. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, it just it. Like I said, and, and I I'm I am in the process of of kind of kicking it back up again. Um, you know, I feel like kind of mal- now more than ever. Mm-hmm. You know, there there are um, certain people who who need help a lot more than than I do. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's something I, I always try to tell my son. 
uh, I'm, I'm digressing here, but I, I always try to tell my son, like we, you know, him and him and his sister kind of hit the lottery. Like they, they live with a family that loves them. They have a place to live. They don't have to worry about food. Mm -hmm. um, even if, even if, you know, me and my wife are struggling, they, they don't need to worry about that. They're, mm -hmm. they're going to eat. They're going to have clothes. He's going to have like school supplies. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of kids that don't. Um, so that's what, you know, I try, even though we don't have a whole lot and even though like I could have used four thousand dollars. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's another great way of putting it. Yeah, yeah. For sure. like, I I for sure could have used the money. You know, sometimes you just have to do something to help people uh, that you know that need it more than you. Honestly, if I would have done this same T-shirt, um, but not had the message behind it of oh, I'm going to donate this money to Southern Poverty Law Center, um, you know, to help in their pursuit against you know hate groups and stuff like that. If I would have just said, hey, I have this cool T-shirt. I made it, buy it. I, I wouldn't have made that money anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the message was was what was important and what what drove it. That's the, that's awesome, man. Um, let's let's talk about social growth and yes. like branding and things of that na nature because you you brought up that you ran Instagram and Facebook ads. Yes. As a freelancer, um, what were you doing to get exposure? When I first uh, went full time freelance again, I. Um, I didn't know what to do, you know, to build an audience. I had, I had spent all that time at my full-time job. Like I was comfortable. I was, I was doing hard work there, but I knew every month I'm going to, I'm going to get a check. I'm going to have my insurance. Um, so I didn't really spend any time trying to build an audience online. And I realized now that was a mistake because it's not easy. But I mean, you need to, you need to do, you need to live it in order to know what exactly. to do, you know? Exactly. So, so once I left that job, um, I started trying to figure that out. I started talking to some friends that have decent followings um, and they, they gave me little tips, you know, being consistent being is one of them, of course, like trying to post all the time, which I'm terrible at now. Mm -hmm. I went a good maybe six months where I posted every day and that's, I mean, you see your followers grow. Mm -hmm. um, not, it's not super rapid or instant and it's not magic, but you're going to see the numbers go up slightly. Um, but but yeah, so I, I I just did the best I could to try to use the right hashtags and mm -hmm. and stuff. Things that I always thought were just like, why are there so many yeah. hashtags well, at the bottom of this thing? Yeah. And then like once you start to try and get a following, you're like, oh, I get it now. Yeah, like my friends would show me they'd they'd, ha they'd post something and it'd have a hundred likes, and I'd be like, who cares? Like, I'm because at the time I was just using Instagram to post pictures of like my kid or my food, mm -hmm. and it's like I don't care if a hundred people liked it. But then when I'm posting my work, it's like. Why do I only have a hundred likes? Like, where's everybody? Uh, because now, like, I'm hoping that someone's gonna see this and gonna hire me for something. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's been it's been hard. I focus mostly on Instagram now. I'm still uh, I'm at like 900 followers right now, which mm -hmm. for me is a big deal. Like, um, you know, I was at like 100 when I first started trying to grow it. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I think if I were to put more effort into it, it would it would work out. But I just get burnt out of like trying to make sure I have something good to post every day like mm -hmm. it just gets hard <laughs> I, I was talking to Taylor about this um and I but <laughs> stuff stuff from Instagram guru Javier that has less likes or le less <laughs> followers than you please, I, I think I, I think I've like made 600 now or something like that. that but but as a as a consumer of content I and another person that I talk to a lot about this is um, Savvy Mama. She's a, to give you some backstory, she um, she went viral because she did a Facebook live of her birth. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, exactly. She like that. Like all you have to do is say that, and then people are are it's interested. Intense, yeah. But she but she 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 was she's primed to do very well on the internet just because of the person she is. She's very she's very personable, and she's like right. she likes talking to people, and like she could talk to anybody about anything. Um, also she has a podcast that's coming out, but yeah. uh, I digress. But what I was going to say is we, we talk a lot about social stuff, uh, her and I, and, um, just like what's working, what's not working and all that type of stuff. And this, a couple of things that I like to see or not necessarily see, but that I think work is like, if you are posting daily, it's more about the journey than like showing your most perfect thing. Thing. Right. Because if, like you, like you said earlier, you need to showcase the fact that like, oh yeah, you are doing it from day to day. So like right. on mine, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to post today. And then like, I literally just set my camera up and then I just filmed myself working. Right. And then, and, and all I did was do a time lapse of that. And then I looked at it, I was like, man, this is pretty cool. And then like, there's, there's one for yeah. one day. So it's like, 
Uh, not only that, but like, all right, well, if I'm setting up all these cameras in here, then I can do a time lapse of that. And then like, okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then um, instead of, because like, it has to take so much time to come up with designs every single day. And I know right. um, Bomley, the, the lead designer here, uh, it was it is doing a doodle a day. Yeah, he was. And it, yeah. It, it's just like all that stuff takes time. So if it's a picture or something where it's like, are you in, or maybe it's just a picture of your field notes and like it's yeah. like a, it's in the middle of a design. Like that's what you could start doing. The other thing that I I think um, what uh, uh, Savvy Mama and myself, um, Paige is her real name, um, we talk about is in your first nine photos, like that grid if somebody comes to your space, yeah. show a picture of your actual self. Cause like when I, when I was scrolling through your Instagram, I was like, I didn't even know you had two kids. Yeah. Uh, but but then scrolling down, once you once right. you get into the stalkerish territory of like yeah. going all the way down, I'm like, oh cool. Um didn't know this. Yeah. <laughs> and then you scroll up. I think it's also cool to show that you're you're the person yeah. behind the brand. Um and if you're if you're making those photos and it, say it's something where it's like, all right, if you do have your face in it, then it's like you're still drawing. I don't know. No, whatever, I, I know exactly. whatever it is. But yeah. I, I was like, I, to me, it was like, I, I was doing just what you were doing, where yeah. I was like, here's a cool photo of some coffee. <laughs> By the way, I love coffee. Anybody that <laughs> makes coffee that wants to sponsor this podcast, hit me up. Um, um, I also like coffee. <laughs> JustinRyan.org. <laughs> yeah. You can contact me through there. <laughs> um, but I was doing that, and then all of a sudden, I was like, "All right, let me just start posting pictures of cameras and others." Because yeah. I'm like, I'm passionate about cameras and all that stuff. And then, out of nowhere, I like, I, I like now I get like maybe two to three DMs a day from people that I had no idea, or maybe it's a text message or an email or some some sort of person is having an interaction with me about like, "Oh, hey, um, what camera should I get?" Like, yeah. or what other? And I was like where's this coming from and then i like i was like i look at my my facebook and then i switched my youtube content to just being like the the um the camera and yeah. tutorials and things like that and then all of a sudden like people just start to see you as an authority in that space right um but uh, now what i've done is i've started to incorporate more pictures of myself and then maybe I'll have like a camera in it or then I'll just like just have a picture of myself. And what I thought was going to happen is I'll post a picture of myself and then just like the numbers will drop I'll off. Tank. Like I'll lose all these followers, <laughs> yeah. but it's different. It's a, either my numbers will stay the same or more people will comment and do all that things. And what's right. crazy is I noticed if you scroll through your feed, you go look at that one picture where you're like, oh, I noticed that I've only been posting pictures of. Um, my art, but I wanted to break it up. Look at the amount of likes yeah. that you have on that one compared to the other ones. And yes, they're like you have some bomb ass designs Thank on you. there. So, so like obviously when you have a bomb ass design, like it has the um, sure. it has it has the likes. But then if you look at the photo that you actually have a photo of yourself, like it ha it has the traction there because pe I feel like people want to see the actual person that's doing the things. You, you know that that makes a lot of sense, and I. Uh, when I was first starting to get back into Instagram, I stopped posting about like my kids or I, I made a separate thing mm -hmm. for like my friends and family where I can see those pictures. Mm -hmm. And I started like, okay, this is going to be just work. So like if you go, if you take a couple hard scrolls down my Instagram, you'll see like everything is exactly the same color palette. Mm -hmm. So like it's all like a light color background with um, a two color palette of like a pink and gray. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a period where everything's a gray background with, pink and off white um because i was thinking like man maybe it, i always thought it looked good mm -hmm. if everything was super consistent yeah. but yeah i i quickly realized one like it's nice sometimes to give yourself those restraints and kind of design like in handcuffs of like mm -hmm. it has to look kind of this way it has to be these three colors in this order um but at the same time i just I don't know if I care enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, I, I want it to look good, but the way that I look at Instagram is I scroll through my feed. If I find something that I really like, I'll go to their page and I'll scroll through. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get upset if it's not like all super consistent in the same color. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think the picture you were talking about was um, a friend, an old friend of mine from school was in town in Austin. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he was like, hey, let's take a picture. Like we haven't seen each other in 10 years. Like, mm -hmm. So he, he, we took a picture, he texted it to me and I was like, I'm going to post it. Like this was a, a fun day. It was great seeing my friend, like whatever. And yeah, it was the first thing I had posted in 
six months or more where it was like, oh, I have, I'm not going to use 30 hashtags on like it has nothing yeah. to do with my work. And yeah, I got more likes than a lot of my work does. <laughs> and that's, and it's funny because in my, like in my real life, my non online life, I, I like, I'm such like a text and email person. Mm -hmm. I hate being on the phone. In-person contact is, is great, but like, I'm just so much more comfortable, like behind mm -hmm. my device. Um, but, but when I go on trips, like if I visit New York or, or California or just like any of those cities, I always plan a day to visit clients. Mm -hmm. Or like, I'm not going to talk to them about work, but I'm just going to like be in their space and just kind of chit chat and be a person to them. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I was telling Bomway, who you're saying, the creative director here at, at the Chive, um, the other day about it, where like, I like seeing a person and reminding them like, hey, not only like, am I around and I do work for you, but I'm also like a human. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, it, it just helps, I think, to, like you said, have an identity mm -hmm. um, and be a person, you know, and not just a bunch of drawings or... Or, or things like that. So yeah, I, that's something that I've been thinking about lately is like, you know, finding that balance. And and yeah, your stuff is awesome. Like seeing you working at the computer or behind a board mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people I follow are like that too. Like I'm a big fan of uh, Tim Ferriss, mm -hmm. who who also has a podcast. I won't say the name of it because I don't think anyone should listen to it over this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, a, he, no, he's it the is. guy that made the four hour yeah. work week. Yeah, yeah exactly. He, this is the second time somebody brought up his podcast in my it's podcast. Re it's really <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah. It is good, and you could you could definitely listen to both. <laughs> yeah, um, no, but but uh, a lot of his posts are just like him holding a book, mm -hmm. or him like holding a supplement he takes, or like a tea he drinks, and uh, obviously he has a much bigger following and much more influence than me. Like mm -hmm. if I post a picture of me holding a book, like <laughs> there, it's more likely people are gonna like find that book and return it <laughs> than, than they are to like go out and buy it. But um, it does it, it it makes you feel or it makes you more human, mm -hmm. like. I think one of my most uh, my most liked Instagram posts was like I I did I took a field notes um, and like two books two art books I liked and I put the field notes on top of them and I took a picture of it on like our wood floor and it was like daily inspiration or whatever mm -hmm. and, like a ton of people liked it I because I, I again because I use like the right hashtags and stuff but uh, I never really thought like oh, I should just keep doing that like because I again like I was in that mentality of everything needs to look uniform and the same mm -hmm. and. Well, I think I, I think there needs to be a balance of both, and I'm yeah. still trying to figure that out. Yeah, and also again, I have not that many followers, so yeah. I, I, there, there's only there's yeah. only so much that I can yeah. say. But yeah. I, I but I'm just saying like what's I I, I post every day, right. um, so it's just like one of the I think the setting the at least the constraint of like well put something up every day. Then right. then that just like well fuck how am i gonna <laughs> how am i gonna do that and then like one of my coolest posts was uh in in the set behind um justin is this camera and i was like well i post camera things and but it's like an old old school like like taking pictures of abraham lincoln right. um thing so I, I just like set it up put it on a table and took a photo of it and then that was like a really good post for me yeah it's something different it's, <clears throat> it's interesting and uh yeah i mean that that's it's so hard and and when i was doing the one post a day thing i was sitting on my couch at 10 o'clock at night like coming up with what that post was going to be that i was going to post at 11 or midnight mm -hmm. um it never really occurred to me like oh i should just until until very late in it like i can just sit down on a sunday afternoon and spend an hour and make five of these for the coming yeah, week but instead the, yeah. again the fourth quarter like i like <laughs> to i had that pressure of like i need to scramble to get something up today even though at the end of the day, no one's going to notice if I don't make mm -hmm. my post, but I am. I, I was accountable to myself. And that's something for sure I've, I've let drop off a ton. Like I'm like a once a week at the most guy right now. Mm -hmm. And you can see the the numbers suffer from that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's so hard. Like I've, I've always just felt like, man, I don't care. <laughs> like I don't care about, I don't care about well, no, social no, numbers, no, but let's, I do. Let's, I really let's, do. Let's, let's put it this way. It's not that you don't care. It's, it's that you care about your work. Exactly. But, but you yeah. like, it, you're like, it's the, it's that hustle that, that is today's standard of right. you have to put on a, not necessarily a persona. I feel like I'm being hypocritical of what I just said, but like, <laughs> we'll show them who you are, but you have to put right. on, you have to put on in that space to showcase your work in right. today's day and age, um, either you do that or you have a bunch of contacts still in the industry that you can like that you can still hit up and that you're still an authority in the space. Sure, and and I think that's the thing. Like with, with social media, at least the way that I see it is, um, it's a highlight reel, right? Mm -hmm. Like people yeah. put. I mean, there are of course people will post about you know when they're going through a hard time or whatever, but for the most part, 
people are going on and they're talking about like that awesome day they had or that great trip they did and you're not seeing the the ups and downs and and, and all of that and i think we in in the space that we're in in the creative space the people that are going to follow you they want to see the mm -hmm. ups and downs they want to know like yeah. here's that hard project here's mm -hmm. you know here's the 50 sketches i did before getting to the actual final one the journey because exactly because they're they're on that same journey or a lot of them are um so i think that's hard to overcome too is like uh i when i was doing these posts i wanted everything to be perfect mm -hmm. um not realizing like a lot of the stuff i like is the stuff that isn't i like to see you know I love that you got that logo approved, but I like seeing the 10 that they hated because mm -hmm. I want to know how you got there. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's something I need to work on too. Like it's, it's funny cause I know it, it's hard to be, a, and I'm sure you've seen this yourself. I, I would imagine it's probably hard for you to like edit these videos and things like, mm -hmm. like compared to doing a chive video where you, you maybe have a roadmap of how you want it to be mm -hmm. like, cause this is all, I mean, I'm on this no. podcast with you, but this is all you, <laughs> No, you know but what it's, I mean? It's like, like it, I would say these are much easier because it's long. It's like people you you tell the whole thing, but the, okay. um, sure. but my my eventual goal when I have more time is to take little snippets of the podcast, put them to B roll, and then take like so you tell a story within the podcast, and then okay. I like say we I use some of those overhead shots and other things like that where it's just like here's Justin at his workplace oh, okay, doing yeah. all that, and where you have this sweet like slow mo of you working yeah. and doing all that, and then you talk about like whatever from whatever that story that you're telling during the podcast is right. there i just noticed that i really move my hands yeah, on the desk like 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 doing this it's um, fine because <laughs> i'm i'm a, i'm italian and uh i've been fighting this whole time to keep my hands down because i'm a very yeah. talk with my hands person so yeah <laughs> you're making up for it for me but uh let, let's go ahead and start to wrap this up sure. so one thing that i like to ask everybody at the very end is in your craft of being a graphic designer what is just one piece of advice that you can give to somebody that if they were back in the their high school days with all their uh, with all their friends doing the band thing or whatever, if they wanted to get into graphic design nowadays, what would you tell them? Honestly, um, it would just be to, to be willing to do the work. I mean, it's not always going to be fun. It's not always going to be like the most exciting project, but um, that's how you're going to get to the exciting projects is by, you know, making your way through the not so fun ones and, and building the contacts. Um, you know, luckily most of my first projects were with friends. Um, they, they, you know, because it was friends, they did pay very little money or like a slice of pizza or something. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it took that in order to, to do the stuff that, that did make money. Um, another thing I, I would say is just like, you know, really, I wouldn't, I don't do it if you're doing it for money or to try to be a cool designer guy. Cause it's not, it's not going to be a cool time all the time. Like, uh, do it cause you like it. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's why I did it. I, I had limited experience in working. Like I told you, like I, I tried being a cashier and like stocking shelves. Not that I would have done that for my whole life, but I knew that made me miserable. And, uh, when I would just for fun, open up Photoshop or grab a sketchbook, like I'd have a lot, I'd love it. Like that would mm -hmm. be great. So, uh, I would say, yeah, just, just stick with it and just make sure you still love it. Like if, if you're not enjoying what you're doing while you're, you know, working with these crappy clients who don't pay a whole lot of money, do a side project. Even if it doesn't make you much, do it to remind yourself, like, this is the work I love to be doing. And eventually, you know, I'm not going to have to worry about those other projects. I'm going to do just, I'm going to love it all the time. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Justin. Where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at justinryan.org. Um, or you can find me on Instagram, justinryanorg, just with, without the dot. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. Yeah. So uh, be sure to check out his textures and things like that uh, on his website. If you want to find me on social media, I'm at JAV Mercedes on all the social things Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, on YouTube. You can watch these in actual video format in 1080p crisp high resolution mm -hmm. at the passion in progress podcast and then i have my own personal page where we were just talking about doing like all the video things tutorials and whatnot javier mercedes on youtube just type in javier mercedes on google you'll find your boy this has been the passion in progress podcast with javier mercedes and justin ryan org go check out his website Thank you. And uh, I don't know about Javi, but I wasn't joking about the free coffee. So. <laughs> <laughs>
I do like cold brew. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. It's in your it's in your Instagram uh, little thing. Uh, cold brew. That's Man, that'd be a, that'd be cool. I want to. Hey, hey, uh, cold brew coffee. Tons of places in Austin yeah. that, that make bottled cold brew. All right, thank you guys. Also, don't forget to leave a review on iTunes, please, please.